what do you do if your business goes wrong in the Philippines? First thing you need to do is analyze what went wrong. Um, next one is, can it be recovered? Third thing is, is there an exit strategy? Have you got a plane ticket? Have you got enough money to get out, get yourself sorted and come back? Um, you need to sit and assess these things before you move forward with anything else. Because the last thing you want to be do doing is being stuck in wherever you are, because it doesn't need to just be the Philippines, unable to get back out of the country because your business has basically swallowed your last bit of cash flow and access to it to get out of the country to get your life back in order. Um, these things happen for various reasons a change in market um, excess competition I mean we've had it with the call uh, not the call center the internet calf I think we had nine internet calves open up in the area when the CNARS was busy because uh, a lot of time it's OFW money it's overseas money it's not their money so even if the business is viable or not they're not too fast but there's different reasons for things go wrong. Uh, the key ones I come across, it's like saying like that, you get excess competition. Next one is the husband drinks too much. Um, this often happens where the guys have bought a bar or something, bar, restaurant or whatever, and then they're sitting in there all day and they're bored. So they start drinking and they're drinking with the locals and whatever. And then they start getting a bar tab that can sometimes be more than the bar actually makes. Um, so it's always eaten into the business. So if with that sort of thing, if you're a drinker, take out your pension. Don't touch the business money with it. Um, because you can monitor how much you're spending. Then. The other one is people not recognizing the money in the till. They see it as spending money. 5000 in the till, that's 5000 spending money. They don't see we've got to restock with that. We've got to pay the electric bill, the gas bill whatever and what's left is profit they just see that's money for spending it's in the till we've made that um if you've got somebody like that i recommend do not let them in control of the money because it's very hard to change the mindset on that one uh it does take a bit of time um another one is letting the family use the place this has bankrupted some people we know uh, because they go and eat there every day for free because their relative that owns the place wouldn't tell them no. So instead, they bankrupted the business. No, there's no logic in it. But the whole point is these things happen. And then you sit there going, well, why did you do it? And it's like, but they're relatives. And it's like, I don't understand what you're talking about. If I have a bar in the UK, even if I give a free free beer away, I've still got to pay tax on it. Even if I wanted to give it away, i still got to pay the tax on it because it's still come out of the bar. Um, it's Everything costs something. So, don't understand it. But people do that. The other one is the, the partner that has basically stolen it. Stolen the money. Uh, maybe a business partner, maybe a wife, girlfriend or whatever. Um, and they rob the business blind or sell it without you knowing. Because a lot of businesses haven't got any expats names on the, any of the documents. So things get sold without your knowledge. Um, but the, the whole point is to make sure you're never in a situation where you're stranded um and i know some people get to that point where they say well i'll just reinvest some more money i know it's my plane ticket money but i'm sure it's going to be all right i don't recommend doing that i do recommend going back to where we came from making some more money and then coming back um otherwise you're in the risk of losing everything um including not being able to get out of the country to sort things out financially thanks for watching